Hey guys, it's Neversync, and today I want to show you the strategy I used to beat Moonlord, the final Terraria boss. Now, as you see, I'm standing in a box of stone in the video, however, we are still face tanking most of his attacks. Our box of stone is only blocking a few missiles, and we still have to take the full damage of the beams and of some other projectiles. This is master mode, and we are only using pre Moonlord gear, that means we have to be very specific about our items. Now, for the first part of the video, let's talk about our gear, equipment and buffs. We are using two weapons, one for long range, one for short range. Solar Eruption is used in the first phase and Daybreak for the second one. We are using our Beetle armor set, the most tanky pre moonlot armor set, in order to absorb a lot of the damage he deals to us. We want to enchant our accessoires with the maximum defense we can get, so try to get warding on all accessoires. First of all, we want to use Celestial Shell. During the night, Celestial Shell provides us with 11 defense, 50% damage and attack speed, 4% crit and 1.5 region per second, making it a great item for both defensive and offensive capabilities. I recommend the usage of the Master Ninja gear, it provides us with 10% dodge chance, which is also a nice defensive boost, especially together with a Brain of Confusion. Of course, since we are going for maximum tankiness, we are also using Warm Scarf, the defense, the additional damage reduction is just great. Our next item is a Brain of Confusion. That one comes from a Crimson World. Since we are using both a Worm Scarf and a Brain of Confusion, I recommend creating a second world on Master Difficulty to quickly kill the first boss, if it's Destroyer, sorry, uh, Eater of Worlds or Brain of Cthulhu, to get the other item. We are also using the Charm of Mist. The potion cooldown reduction and the additional regeneration synergizes really well with our other effects. Potentially the most important item is the shiny stone. It provides us with huge regeneration while we are standing still. Our final item is a frozen shield. On top of the nice defense boost, it also provides us with really high damage reduction once we are on low life. That synergizes greatly with our Endurance Potion and with additional damage reduction from our Beetle set. We will also need the Black Spot Pirate Mount that is obtained during the Pirate Invasion event. That allows us to outrun the Moon Lord in the second phase. Finally, we require some specific potions. The Endurance Potion, the Life Force Potion, the Exquisitely Stuffed Buff, an Iron Skin Potion and finally a Regeneration Potion. Of course, you should also use some generic damage boosting buffs, such as the Res or the Rage Potion, the Summoning Potion, a Flask, such as the Ico Flask, and of course, some Life Flasks, at the very least, the 150 Life Flask. Before the start of the event, get generics buffs, such as a plus one summon from your dungeon table, and the 10% damage penetration from the Redstone that is found in the jungle, and head to your arena. Speaking of which, let us cover the arena preparations. You want a box with a door or a platform below it in order to easily get out or in of the box. The box is there to protect you from one single explosive projector from the moon node. you'll still be taking the rest. The box should contain some honey and you should have some uh, sunflowers, a um, fireplace and a, a hard lantern nearby to increase your regeneration and movement speed further. We are now gonna jump straight in into the fight. First, precast your sentries or nimbus clouds or other damage boost you have. Also, of course, your summon, usually the starter's dragon. Um, also, I forgot to mention, if you have bested statues or hard statues to provide with additional region, those are pretty welcome, since we'll be taking a lot of damage. Once the moonlot spawns, start attacking him with your solar eruption. Try to damage the three eyes equally. You want them to go down more or less at the same time, but focus on the forehead eye most. Otherwise, just use heal potions after taking a lot of damage, such as through a beam in this phase. Otherwise, simply don't move and focus on DPSing. As long as you don't move, have proper health potions and have a lot of defense, you should be around 120 defense at that point, you should be fine. He shouldn't be able to kill you with his attacks because our region and defense will absorb most of the damage. It's also worth mentioning that you can also fight him outside with such an equipment. However, to make it really safely, I recommend getting a Rod of Discord to teleport through his beam. Theoretically, you can probably even lose one or two items or not be so precise with your enchantments, because we still have quite a bit of HP once we leave this phase. 
Still, if you struggle with this fight, it's likely because you're missing on proper enchantments or missing some of the buffs. You can also place some garden gnomes or some bone torches for some passive luck, the bested statue for additional defenses and the heart statue for even more life if you got any or all of those items. While they are not necessary, they will provide you with a useful edge during the first phase of the fight. As you can see, we don't have any troubles tanking the damage and we are sustaining our life points quite well despite taking the well, beam into the face quite often over and over. Now we have our first eyes down and the second eyes will follow in a few seconds. While it's probably possible to tank the second phase as well, it deals much more damage and I don't recommend risking it. Instead, leave your house once all three eyes are down, mount up and unless you are like me and bump into the terrain quite a few times, you should be quite outranging him in a few seconds. Because the, um, the black spot mount is simply really really quick. Once you gain some range, he shouldn't be able to damage you with his beams and you just need to dodge or survive a few attacks. These are much less deadly than the attacks previously and with your life region, some uh, fireplaces and maybe some hard lanterns along the way, there shouldn't be any trouble even if you are bad at dodging. During this phase, equip your daybreak glaive and keep attacking him to damage his heart. That's actually just about it. You can also turn around him by flying over him, that's actually a good way to dodge his attacks if you've gone too far. Uh, be wary not to bump into any clouds, otherwise oh, you've, the fight is pretty much won at this point. I haven't recorded the loot, I got a celebration MK2 during that fight and during the same day I managed to acquire the Zephyr sword. So yeah, I really enjoyed uh, Terraria 1.4 and this video brings it to a nice end. Um, yeah guys, thanks for watching, um, if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and I hope you're having a great day, goodbye.